Hello everybody. The first thing I want to say is Sebastian is doing better. He's okay. It has been just crazy. Sebastian, like I said in my very quick video the other day, he was really good and then he wasn't. And that's just the type of infection that he has. He has a staph infection. Once that infection is like no longer dormant, it takes over almost immediately and that's exactly what happened. It was like within an hour, he was com a completely different kid on Saturday night. So um, we have a confirmed diagnosis of staph. He does not have pneumonia as far as we think. And the infection so far, it is unfortunately, I believe it got into his uh, bloodstream, but it is not in his heart, which is wonderful. The staph infection is unrelated to the pressure wound he had in his groin. It is specifically and only on his incision from heart surgery, which when we brought him home, I noticed that the very end of his incision line looked a little bit red, and I even sent a picture to his surgeon, and I said, I feel like this could be the start of an infection. And at the time, he was like, I'm not worried about it. It's not very red. It's, it's gonna be okay for now. Clearly it wasn't, but nobody knew that. Like, it's just this weird intuition, mother's intuition. Just by looking at it, I was like, mm, that looks like it could be a problem. And now, here we are. Anyway, treatment courses for this have been a little bit frustrating. I'm not mad at anybody because there's a lot of people on his team, a lot of moving parts, but we've been given a lot of mixed signals. We just got information this morning from infectious disease that they were thinking Sebastian will need to have another pick line placed and go home on antibiotics again for another six weeks, weeks, excuse me, which if you have been here for eight weeks, or prior, you know that we just did a six week antibiotic course in September from September to November. We just finished one. So to hear that we were gonna have to do that all over again, felt like a setback, but it was like, okay, whatever, we'll do it. The reason for that is because this type of infection, um, think of it like a, like a three layer cake. The infection can be on the top of the cake, which just on the skin. It could get into the bloodline, which is the middle layer of the cake and then it could go into the heart or into the lungs it can make a home somewhere in the body for Sebastian since he just had a huge heart surgery that type of infection would probably be attracted to his heart so we were thinking the infectious disease team was thinking it's better to put him on a six-week course of antibiotics to not only treat this infection of course but also prevent the infection from landing on his heart and contaminating any hardware from the surgery. However, infectious disease missed a very crucial part of Sebastian's surgery. This surgery that Sebastian just had on December 1st, there was no hardware used in the surgery. Sebastian actually had all of the hardware and foreign materials removed from his body and they were able to use his own tissues to repair his heart this time in surgery December 1st. The infectious disease doctor, I think, just assumed that hardware is used and it's not a problem, but it changes everything. But um, she probably just assumed because all previous of his three surgeries, he had foreign material used for reconstruction. So I think that it was safe for her to assume that they did the same thing, but they did not. So her treatment plan changes drastically given the fact that there is no foreign material in Sebastian's body. His surgeon, um, who is absolutely wonderful, love, love him. Um, his surgeon came in today and changed his dressing the site. incision looks incredible. The picture that I posted in my last video doesn't give it justice. It, that, it was so red and swollen and hot. They went in, his surgeon at bedside went in, we sedated Sebastian, and he just poked a little hole and he drained so much fluid out of there. Sebastian had immediate relief. He took a five hour nap after not sleeping for 50 hours. His fevers immediately went away. All of the redness went away. I mean, he was red from shoulder blade to shoulder blade because that's how bad the infection was. Once um, he drained that fluid, Sebastian 
like he's like a completely different child now he's like smiling and laughing and hanging out but anyway the surgeon believes that this type of staph infection can be treated orally with antibiotics meaning sebastian will just come home with like a 10-day antibiotic that we put through his g2 which is wonderful um we still I, i'm trying not to get my hopes up i'm trying not to because that could change it seems like I know something one minute and then the next minute it's completely different and that just kind of happens. Um, that's just medicine for you. But right now we're teetering between figuring out is he going to go on go home on an oral antibiotic? Is he going to go home with another IV and do six weeks of antibiotics at home? Um, is he going to be home by Christmas? Unfortunately, probably not. And that's not the focus. Uh, Sebastian's health obviously is the main priority but um, I would be lying if I said I didn't hope that he was home by Christmas and I'm not ashamed of that I want him home for Christmas but with that being said it isn't the priority so if he doesn't come home by Christmas it's okay the focus is that we know what he has and how to treat it I am going to stop talking here in a minute and show you Sebastian I just wanted to once again and it sounds so like trivial and repetitive but I I do want to thank you for praying for Sebastian it was scary um, on Sunday because he was fine and then he wasn't I can't explain it it like two hours it took two hours for him to took a really take a really bad turn uh, so that was really it caught Gio and I off guard and it was very scary because we didn't know what was going on it was very quick um, so I do I really want to say thank you and um, just just keep praying for us these last three months specifically have just been so so hard and if you're new here it's not always like this Sebastian actually wasn't in the hospital for like over four and a half years with major complications so the last three months have just been like whoa it's like one thing after another it's been crazy Everybody always asks how I'm doing and how Gio's doing. And the only thing that I would say is we're okay. We are different people. We experience emotions differently and we are different parents. Gio is very resilient and he loves very fiercely and he gets mad when people make mistakes. And I'm kind of the opposite in some ways. Um, I feel very deeply. Like, I just feel like I'm at my, like my maximum right now. Um, I don't want to get too excited about anything. I, I, I'm okay, but I feel, I don't know how I feel. I'm okay, but I just need a break and Sebastian needs a break, but we are okay. Gio and I are good. Um, it does put a test on our marriage, but, um, we're okay. Like, it's gonna be okay. The, the most important thing is that Sebastian is getting better and when he's good, we're good and we're on our way there. So anyway, I just wanted to check in. I will show you Sebastian. He's doing really good. And just to recap, he has a staph infection on the actual incision line from heart surgery, completely unrelated to the pressure wound in his groin, which by the way is healing beautifully. And we're gonna figure out what course of antibiotics is gonna be good for him. That's the plan and we may be home by Christmas Eve, we may not. We're also supposed to get like 12 to 18 inches of snow here in Illinois. So even if he was able to go home on Saturday, I don't even know if the road conditions would be drivable. That's his IV, so we'll see. Let me, let me show you Sebastian. He's kind of sleepy right now, but his work of breathing is so, so much better. And as you can see, he's trying to pull on his cords and play with things he's not supposed to. He's got his little light here, but he keeps covering it up. It's supposed to be like that, so you can't get to your IV. But he's doing much better. He did, you can't tell that his color is better, I feel. Maybe you can, but his color is so much better. Um, I took a couple pictures of him earlier that I'll post. He had a nice big smile. So he is doing better. He's just kind of like nap time. And I would show you his incision, but it's all covered up and stuff. But I mean, you can maybe even tell from the side, it's his skin is back to normal color down there. So you saying hi? You smell like you got something in your diaper. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, he is doing better. I'm done with the hospital. I'm done, I'm ready to be home.
we don't even have our bed up yet at home. When we were home, Saturday, I think, yeah, Saturday, the day that this all happened, we had our carpets cleaned and so we don't even have like our couch in the living room or we're not sleeping in our bedroom. Gio and I are sleeping on a mattress in the dining room because we had to be on hardwood so the carpets could get cleaned. And our plan was Sunday to move everything and set up our bed and set up Sebastian's bedroom. But we've been here, <laughs> which is fine. Again, the only thing that matters is that Sebastian's okay. It's just, I feel like I need to be settled in. And once I'm settled in, and once Sebastian is home, things are gonna feel much better. I just wanted to check in and again, say thank you. I'm very, very grateful. And even though this is hard, being a special needs mom, I'm still very grateful for Sebastian too. And it is a privilege to know him and to love him and to be loved by him. It is a privilege and it's tough, but nothing beats knowing him and loving him, so it's fine. And uh, I feel like sometimes the comments get a little crazy down down below. Not usually, but sometimes. And people are like, why are you posting your kid in the hospital? And so I'm going to end this video by saying, I don't know what most of you parents are doing tonight. You're probably wrapping presents and figuring out what you're going to be cooking for Christmas and getting all those last minute things. And this is where we are. So that's why... I'm posting Sebastian and myself in the hospitals because that's our life. And it's okay, but that's our life. With that being said, um, I'm gonna change its poopy diaper. And if he's happy, I will record a little bit more of him so you can spend some time with him too. If not, I may have to do that tomorrow. Hopefully he'll be having a better day tomorrow. Um, but I just, again, I wanted to say thank you to the majority. I would say like 99% of you are so loving and wonderful and I'm so, so thankful to that. But I do have to speak on certain things because this is a public channel. There's 20,000 of you on here and some people come in on just one video and they don't know me and they don't know Sebastian and they don't know our family. So it's not uh, necessarily that I'm defending myself. That's not the point. Uh, I just like to be transparent and I like people to have the whole picture. So when I address comments, it's just for that reason. I don't feel the need to defend myself because I know that I'm a really good mom and I know that we are making a difference in, in meeting a lot of new people. So uh, that little snippet there was for someone who maybe is watching our channel for the first time and wondering what the heck is going on. Right, I literally just choked on a granola bar. That's why my eyes are red. Um, I wanted to say really quickly too that everybody was commenting about the community tab on YouTube. That's a new thing to me. I didn't know that was a thing, but I'm going to figure it out because apparently you can just make like texts like a Facebook post, but for YouTube and just kind of update people in between recording. So I'm gonna learn how to do that so we can stay more in touch and you guys can have updates a little more regularly when I don't have time or don't feel up to recording a video. So I'm going to work on that now that I know that that is a thing. Anyway, I'm done talking. All right, we'll see you soon. Maybe, maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday, I don't know. But we will see you soon. Thank you. What are you doing? You feeling better? Hello? You feeling okay? Ow! What? Tell me! Tell me! Oh, wait, no. <laughs> you looking for me? Yeah? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you take that out, mister? You wanna kiss? I love you. Hey, you're gonna get in trouble. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. It's good to see you smile. I love you. I love your pretty face. You're so handsome. <laughs> it will see you guys tomorrow or the next day. We don't know. We'll see you guys soon. Love you. Are you ready for bed? Okay.